Miska TN Deformatis Rebelladum Joseph von Hammer Perks 4, 1818. Pref is in this year of 1818. No more than seven centuries have passed in which the foundations were laid for the Brotherhood of Knights Templar in the year 1120. From that time they increased in such a size that they could boast in their many thousands of horses while continually growing strong by their very costly possessions in Europe and Asia. They were to be feared for their might, spiritual and temporal, yet within less than two centuries they became extinct due to a most grievous disaster. During this same time wars were undertaken to take back Christ's sepulchre from the hands of unbelievers. Also the infamous order of murderers best known as assassins emerged, as if from the turbulent sea of Islamic heresy, in the Orient, similarly proceeding about two centuries before being uprooted shortly before the abolition of the Knights. Templar by the combined ecclesiastical and secular authority, for they were offensive to both caliphs and sultans. In the history of this most shameful covenant, which simultaneously appears with this dissertation in the German language from the press of Cotter, I, we have already taken note regarding the civil connection between the assassins and Templars, all of which sheds new light on this subject when considering the secret doctrine of the Temple. Each of these orders covered up their choice of ambition with a cloak of piety, while proving their party worthless by submitting to earthly lust. They continually practice these wicked disciplines in secret, increasingly storing up this mystery of evil till nothing could hold it back from bursting forth to so great an extent it became common knowledge. They were thus pursued by pontiff and king with anathema and sword atoning those occult dogmas with their blood, extinguishing this conflagration with their own ruin. The history of the Brotherhood of the Knights Templar and its secret institutes pertain to the Orient, since from there this order got its start. That is, from Syria, the seedbed of the dominant religions, and at the same time the bosom of the most impious sects. It brought forth the most ancient oriental philosophy from the inner reaches of the Jerusalem temple beliefs so that after seven centuries from the finding of the cross by Helena and the raising of the Roman standards by Constantine, they attributed to the cross a more ancient and secret meaning out of the beliefs of the religions of Phoenicia and Egypt mixing things most profane with things most sacred and adulterating the most recent Christian doctrine with the most ancient symbols of oriental philosophy. Many heresies of the same age, all of which sprung from the Gnosis tree, have encountered a true and full explication out of oriental sources due to the labors of orientalist philologists. Thus we read of the ideas of the Farsis brought to light by Anquetilus and illustrated by Clucurus most recently explained by Norbeck, too. The beliefs of the Druzes and Mutavilii sketched out by Adler. 3. A weightfuller illustration by the celebrated Sylvester de Sassi. I've. The heresies of the Manichaeans and the Arthites treated by the celebrated heresy historiographers Bosova, V, and Mosheim, V, certainly would have become more apparent by now if writers had devoted greater effort to oriental philology. Finally, the ambiguities of Gnosis from the Kabbalah were entirely resolved by Horn. 7. Treading in these footsteps, we have made a matter of public knowledge both the history of the Assassins and the Ashayapia, hidden, dogmas of the Templars, and how, at least as far as the symbols are concerned, like a phoenix rising from the flames they most certainly were resurrected in the order of Freemasons. Plainly we know how to move forward through fires set beneath deceitful ashes, and we perceive how to take a chance on something replete with danger, so that what lay concealed for seven centuries we might undertake to reveal to our readers, that is, the origin of Baphomet. No 